Mr. Speaker, the Globe and Mail published very troubling allegations of interference by the PMO and officials in a criminal investigation. Can the Prime Minister confirm that neither he nor, he nor any member of his staff had discussions with the former Attorney General regarding criminal prosecutions against SNC Lavalin? The Honorable Minister of Justice. Mr. Speaker, I have never been pressed or had any pressure from the Prime Minister when it comes to the, any decisions on this file or any other. As Attorney General of Canada, I am the Prime Legal Advisor for the government. I provide legal advice to the government with a view to acting in the public interest. I take these responsibilities very seriously. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. The question, we've heard the Prime Minister's very carefully scripted, legalistic answer. But the question is, did anyone in the Prime Minister's office at any time communicate with anyone in the former Attorney General's office on the matter of the criminal prosecution of FNC Lavalin, yes or no? Justice. Mr. Speaker, as the Prime Minister has said earlier today, these allegations are false. The Leader of the Opposition. That wasn't the question, Mr. Speaker. The question was whether or not anyone in the Prime Minister's office at any time had communications with anyone in the former Attorney General's office on the subject matter of the criminal prosecution of FNC Lavalin. This is a yes or no answer. Which is it? One Minister of Justice. Mr. Speaker, I'll repeat once again, as the Prime Minister has said earlier today, these allegations in the Globe and Mail are false. We'll hear the opposition. Again, he can't answer a simple yes or no question. So I'll ask him a slightly different question. According to the lobbyist registrar, SNC-Lavalin lobbied this government dozens of times. In those meetings with senior officials, did the subject of their criminal prosecution ever come up? Yes or no? no. Minister of Justice. Mr. Speaker, I wasn't privy to those conversations. As the Prime Minister has said earlier today, these allegations are false. Leader of the Opposition. Well, Mr. Speaker, since the Prime Minister can't answer these questions, I'll answer part of that for him. At least 14 times, according to the lobbyist registrar, uh -oh, meetings with SNC-Lavalin touched on the subjects of, quote, justice and, quote, law enforcement. In those meetings where justice and law enforcement were brought up, were the subject matters dealing with the criminal prosecution of FNC Lavalin ever touched upon, yes or no? The Minister of Justice. Mr. Speaker, as the Prime Minister outlined today, he has not given directives to either my predecessor and, or myself on this matter. The Honourable Member for Minouski Neuget, Temesquatsa de Basque. Mr. Speaker, this is troubling because when we look at the situation, we see that in 2006, SNC Levelin illegally gave some $110,000 to the Liberal Party and its associations. Today, SNC Levelin needs some help because they're in trouble. The machine started up, and more than 50 meetings between SNC Levelin and the government took place over the past two years. Why? Because SNC Levelin wants the accusations of fraud and corruption be abandoned by the Liberals. The Minister of Justice was fired, and everyone wondered why. Was she fired because at the end of the day, uh, a friend's a friend? Yes. The Honourable Minister of Justice. Mr. Speaker, as the Prime Minister stated earlier today, these allegations are false. Neither me nor my predecessor were subjected to pressure or received any directives from the Prime Minister or his office. The Honourable Member for Rimouski. Well, we know that oftentimes the simplest answer is the best. That there are close links between the Liberals and SNC-Lavalin. Illegal donations were made. 
SNC-Lavalin needs help. The, the PMO is happy to help. They pressed the Minister of Justice to try to sweep the accusations of fraud and corruption against them under the carpet. She refuses, and uh, she's fired. And we understand why she said it's a pillar of our democracy that our system of justice be free from even the perception of political interference and uphold the highest levels of public confidence. Who in the PMO is behind? The Honourable Minister of Justice. Mr. Speaker, as the Prime Minister said today, he gave no directives to my predecessor. He did not press her. And as Attorney General of Canada, I was neither given directives nor pressed by the Prime Minister's office or the Prime Minister. Christina Bulkley Valley. Confused and shocked when the first Indigenous Justice Minister was summarily fired without explanation. In her letters to letter to Canadians, she warned, as Attorney General must quote speak truth to power yeah. and quote that it is a pillar of our democracy that our system of justice be free from even the perception of political interference. Corruption. In the Bob Shell report. From the Globe and Mail, we now understand truly what she meant. Because when the now former Justice Minister refused to drop the fraud and corruption trial against SNC-Lavalin, she was fired. Again, did anyone in the Prime Minister's office communicate with the former Justice Minister about this case? Yes or no? The Honourable Minister of Justice. Mr. Speaker, as the Prime Minister said earlier today, he, the Prime Minister, neither the Prime Minister nor his office put the, my predecessor or myself under pressure, nor gave any directives. These allegations contained in the Globe and Mail, Mr. Speaker, are false. The Honourable Member for Skeena Bulkley Valley. Do you, do you see what they're doing? A carefully crafted denial that isn't a denial at all, because it was the same company found guilty of corruption and fraud was also caught illegally donating more than $100,000 to these same Liberals. Yeah. And SNC-Lavalin was rewarded, Mr. Speaker, when they faced corruption and fraud charges. The Liberals leaned on their own Justice Minister not to go to trial, but to get a plea deal. Yeah. Do Liberals seriously expect Canadians that all of these illegal and troubling events implicating the Prime Minister's office itself and their former Justice Minister are all somehow just a coincidence. Yeah. Of, uh, Minister of Justice. Mr. Speaker, at no point have I been directed or pressured by the Prime Minister or the Prime Minister's office to make any decision in this or any other matter. As the Attorney General for Canada, I have the responsibility, I'm the Chief Legal Officer of the Crown, I have the responsibility to give legal advice to the government in the public interest. I take these responsibilities very seriously. Order, I'm having difficulty hearing the answers. I'd appreciate members' cooperation. Order. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Well, Mr. Speaker, he might not have been, quote, directed to, but he was certainly promoted yeah. based on his willingness to go along with the PMO on this. So I'll try again. SNC Levelin met at least 14 times with the, the Prime Minister's office on justice and law enforcement. There were meetings with the pr principal secretary. Did the subject of criminal prosecutions against SNC Levelin were raised with those meetings with the PMO? Yes or no? Mr. Speaker, as uh, the Prime Minister said earlier today, he gave no directives uh, to my predecessor. I can tell you that I was neither pressured nor received any directives from the Prime Minister or the Prime Minister's office regarding any decision on this file. As Attorney General of Canada, I take my responsibilities very seriously. Mr. Speaker, the new Attorney General is trying to hide behind the Prime Minister's carefully scripted legal response this morning. But the question is quite simple. It's direct about dealings on the criminal prosecution of FNC, SNC Lavalin. I'll ask the Attorney General again. Was he ever contacted by anyone in the Prime Minister's office about this case before he was promoted to the position of Attorney General? Mr. 
Mr. Speaker, as I have said, I have received neither pressure nor direction from either the Prime Minister or the Prime Minister's office at, it, with respect to the decision that is to be that, that could be made in this particular file. Mr. Speaker, as a Quebec member of Parliament who reads the newspapers, I did know about this case, but it does not transfer into my role as Attorney General. Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Well, Mr. Speaker, the question wasn't about the Prime Minister's carefully vetted answer this morning. The question was about himself. Yes, he may have been aware of this case, but the question is very specific. Was he ever contacted by anyone in the PMO about the criminal prosecution of SNC-Lavalin before he was named to his new post of Attorney General? Did those conversations happen, yes or no? Here, here. The Minister of Justice. Mr. Speaker, the answer is no. Good. The opposition. Perhaps the former the Attorney General can shed some light on this issue. It's quite clear that we are seeing the beginnings of a cover-up here. The former Attorney General prided herself on speaking truth to power. She spoke truth to power behind closed doors, and the Prime Minister fired her. Will she now speak truth to power in front of all Canadians and confirm whether or not she received any communication from the Prime Minister's office regarding the criminal prosecution of SNC-Lavalin, yes or no? The Honourable Minister of Justice. Mr. Speaker, as the Prime Minister said earlier today, neither my predecessor nor myself has received directives with respect uh, to the, the dealing of this particular case. As Attorney General for Canada, Mr. Speaker, I take my responsibilities to give advice in the public interest to the government very seriously. I will continue to do so. Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, that question was for the former Attorney General. It's clear that this Prime Minister has fired her and now he is silencing her. That's right. Why won't he allow her to answer the question as to whether or not she received any communications between the Prime Minister's office and her own regarding the criminal prosecution of SNC Lavalin. Did those conversations happen, yes or no? The Honourable Minister of Justice. Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister dealt with this matter very clearly earlier today, and he stated that neither he nor anyone in his office pressured my predecessor and, or myself to come to any particular decision in this matter. Mr. Speaker, as the Prime Minister stated earlier today, the allegations contained in the Globe and Mail article are false. Member for Chilliwack Hope. It is a pillar of our democracy that our system of justice be free from even the perception of political interference and uphold the highest levels of public confidence. As such, it has always been my view that the Attorney General of Canada must be nonpartisan, more transparent in the principles that are the basis of decisions, and in this respect, always willing to speak truth to power. Those are the words and principles of the former Attorney General. Why did the Prime Minister fire her for refusing to break them? Here he is. Honourable Minister of Justice. Mr. Speaker, as the Prime Minister said earlier today, neither he nor anyone in his, in his office directed my predecessor or myself to come to any particular result in this case. As Attorney General for Canada, Mr. Speaker, I am the Chief Law Officer of the Crown and I provide legal service to the government with a responsibility to act in the public interest. Mr. Speaker, I take this responsibility very seriously.